going on YouTube? My name's Anthony. I'm bringing you another video on my tree identification series. This one is about the silver maple tree. There's plenty of these trees in the city of Toronto, but this was the best example that I could find. And the brilliant rouge colors with a hint of purple in them is really dominant in this tree. This Latin name is Acer saccharinum, and it's also known as the silver leaf maple, the swamp maple, the white maple or the water maple. In the firewood world they're known as soft maple because they don't grow very dense and that's why you have these long shoots of branches. They tend to grow very quickly so they don't grow that density because of slow growth like in other trees like the sugar maple. They'll grow from 50 to 80 feet high and what happens with them is a lot of times they grow little crevices in them and then a lot of animals tend to live in those crevices. The silver maple has a wide range and is generally in the southeastern areas of Canada and much of the eastern United States. It tends not to grow in the coastal areas where it's very humid, but as far down as Florida and throughout the Midwest, over to the east coast, it grows all throughout that range. After the winter has passed and squirrels and birds have run out of supply of acorns, the silver maple buds provide a food source for the animals. Sugar maples tend to dominate the forest a lot more, so you don't see very many silver maples. Silver maple is also very closely related to red maple. Silver maple is often used for milling boards and tables and its pulp can be used for paper production. Silver maples are heavily used as an ornamental tree and post World War II when they started building a lot of neighborhoods, they started planting silver maples because of their fast growth. They're also very resistant to urban pollution. Let's get in closer and look at the bark and the leaves. The silver maple's bark is very distinct. It starts growing these flat strips and very uniform. And then eventually, once they get so big, you can actually see some of the ends. It looks like they're peeling off. In comparison, the sugar maple doesn't look that distinct with the ribbing. Here's a couple more silver maples. And the colors have hardly changed on these trees. Just a little bit at the tips. Now we are into the fall season, so the leaves have started to change a little bit. On this tree specifically, not very much. You could just see some red coming in, but these leaves will be a nice green color, but then the back side will have like a silvery side to it. And that's where the tree gets its name from. Now how to distinguish the silver maple? Well, you have these three main lobes and in between the lobes, the notches are very deep. Whereas the sugar maples, it only come down to about here. You can see, you can get your fingers quite deep in on each side of the lobe. Now here's a sugar maple leaf lined up with the silver maple leaf. And with the sugar maple, the best way to distinguish is these long points on the end of each lobe. So here's one more example of a silver maple tree and you can see these long limbs just shooting up. And as I said earlier, these trees were used a lot in urban development, but the problem with them is they get brittle and they can do a lot of snapping when you have bad storms or you have ice build up on them. So thanks for watching, like, subscribe, share, comment and all that good stuff. Thank you.